What are those words in verse 31? Have you ever thought about the the vocabulary that God uses? It's interesting uh, what the scriptures say. In fact, uh, the New International, I love how it it starts verse 31. If you have the NIV, it says, get rid of. I mean, isn't that kind of, that's clear. Get rid of. Don't keep around. This is deadly. Uh, it's, it's poisonous. It's, it's, it spreads. It's like having, you know, anthrax in your kitchen, in your flour container, and you might accidentally, sp- you know, put it into something. Get rid of it. Don't keep it around. Get rid of what? What's first on the list? Bitterness. Bitterness reflects a smoldering resentment. Bitterness is a brooding grudge. It's an attitude where a spirit of irritability keeps us in perpetual animosity. We become sour in life and venomous toward those close to us. Doesn't sound very good, does it? And yet it's so present and so allowed and cultivated. The second one, wrath, thumas. It's a wild rage, it's, it's a passion just blowing up uh, with no restraints. Anger, orge is the word, it's an internal smoldering, it's that subtle deep feeling that just, that, that's always kind of under the surface like a reef to sink things. Uh, clamor, krauge is the word, it's the shout or the outcry of strife that reflects itself in public outbursts. When someone is out of control, and their face, and their words, and their, they're just out of control, clamor, slander. Actually, the word is blasphemia in Greek. Um, it's the ongoing defamation of someone that can only come from a bitter heart. It rises from a heart embittered. And then the last one that ends the verse is just the general term for evil. Kakia is the word, and it says, Evil is at the heart of all this, and evil in our heart, and evil allowed in our heart will we'll soon permeate our heart and will darken us. So what's the answer? It must be put away from you. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. What he's saying is, is beware of bitterness. It ruins the kind, tender-hearted, forgiving life. Bitterness ruins it. Did you know bitterness ruins, poisons what God wants to do in our lives? There are many infections of the soul that are caused by sin. One of the more powerful infections is called bitterness. Bitterness slowly infects a person's life systemically. You know, bitterness is, the difference between bitterness and other sins is, other sins are kind of like a mosquito bite. And a mosquito bite harms the area it bites. But if the mosquito is carrying malaria, it systemically harms the life. Bitterness is systemic. And it just crops up everywhere. Every part of a person that's in bitter's life becomes defiled. Hebrews 12, 15 tells us that. Their joys become soured. They can't get any joy out of stuff. It's all sour to them. Their hopes are dim. There's just no hopes left. Their spiritual life gets distant. In fact, God just seems just far away in the dark, somewhere in the fog. Beware of allowing bitterness to destroy your life. One of the struggles believers have always faced while seeking to follow the Lord is bitterness. That's why Ephesians 4.30 is here. It says, verse 30, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Don't, Don't pour water on the furnace that energizes your life. Don't put out the source of light and warmth and power in your life. And then what's the very first thing he lists? that is a quencher of the Holy Spirit. Verse 31. Don't grieve the Spirit, so put away bitterness. And get back to verse 32, a kind, tender-hearted, forgiving life that the Holy Spirit brings. The immeasurable power of God is stopped when people disobey. God's grace teaches us to deny ungodliness, but when we resist that grace, 
our sin grieves and quenches? The Holy Spirit. 